Hey gang, it's Zippo out here on this uh, hot sunny September day uh, video reply response um, for uh, a couple of my members wanting to walk through on the maintenance on these guys and how they're actually driven. Um, I'll make it pretty cut and dry. Uh, I'm going to do your lubrication points. I'm going to show you how the drive system works and show you areas to check your fluid levels in your bevel gearbox uh, and your transfer case, your gearbox, your um, transmission. So, just get right down to it. Let's get on the axle first, on the differential. Get the differential rolled around here and you'll see a grease zerk. That grease zerk right there. That greases your differential box where your six gears are. Six, eight, six, eight, where your eight gears are. Um, pump four or five pumps of grease in on a, on a full size grease gun. Uh, and as far as lubrication, I would lubricate every single pivot point, and I do lubricate every pivot point uh, just to keep from wearing stuff out. See, as I move this, anything that pivots, in this area I'd make sure that I lubricate like I would lubricate on both sides of this nut and bolt lubricate here on your shift linkage um, see, down here on the other side of the shift linkage it comes up and grabs your brake band where it pivots in these uh, side plates that are on your bevel gearbox just little drops of oil just to keep things uh, slick so that you're not running metal against metal wearing metal down okay this here's your bevel gearbox this is not where you check is my finger in there that's this is not where you check uh, your fluid level this is a vent hole for the bevel gearbox so leave that one alone come back to the back of the bevel gearbox and down inside is a MPT fitting what where am I at there we go an MPT fitting right there take that off the fluid level should be as high as you can get it and use a uh, ADW 90 weight I use full synthetic uh, everything just shifts a lot nicer and a lot smoother um, thing about using uh, synthetic oil is if there's a place where oil is going to leak synthetic will find it faster than a conventional uh, natural petroleum product uh, so that lets you know what seals you need to replace, like axle seals or gear case seals or, or and things along those lines. Uh, as far as further inspection on the back side, if you look right down here, see this nut and this bolt and the lock nut. There's two of them. There's another one if I roll it on forward. There, you can see both of them there make sure those are secure if they're not loosen this tighten and then retighten okay do that on both of them one is on your keyway one actually goes into uh, your drive shaft and it holds everything still if you want you can pull them out and check the bottoms of them they should be crowned real nice to where when you tighten them down they're going to bite into the metal that's pretty important if they're flattened out replace them uh, you can replace them with a hex key uh, or you can just uh, find a, uh, a stock lock nut like that um, you do not want a standard bolt put in there standard bolt isn't faced correctly I'm gonna grab a uh, I'll grab one and show you what I'm talking about so you guys will be clear on that because it's pretty important I've got a whole bunch of these set screws here you can see all these guys uh, I'll grab a bigger one okay now you see that leading edge the very top edge of that how it's dished in there well, this outer edge right here has to be sharp and that will bite down into the metal and stay put um, I usually switch everything over to these if I start having trouble with one and these um, come supplied with Loctite already on them so once I put them in they're in there for good but that's what you want to check is that edge right there you don't want that edge to be flattened out 
okay we got some used ones in here I think let me check and see if I've got one that's flattened out I usually throw them away na, 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 na. yeah here's one this one's good and flattened out I should have already thrown it away we get a good shot of this one get it set up here okay now I don't know if you can see there see the shiny how shiny that is around there that's what you want to make sure uh, is good and sharp so that is a bad one we're going to go ahead and pitch it now um, so we'll get back out to the factory we've already eaten up five and a half minutes of me and my slow talking and I've got the old Garden Mark Squire because it's easier to see the drive system on it. We'll get to that in a minute uh, for one of the, part of the video requests. So that pretty well takes care of the back axle part and taking care of your uh, lubrication, all of your pivot points for lubrication. Same thing with your mid PTO. Anywhere that pivots, like here, here. I go ahead and uh, put a little bit of oil on the spring rod because when you put spring tension down on it that that rod moves back and forth you don't want it to act like a saw with metal against metal and um, then your next grease zerk is on your mid PTO uh, pump enough so that you see grease come out on either side um, that way you know and those are roller bearings in there you want to be sure that they're uh, in good shape uh, side to side plays fine this is where you need to make sure that everything's uh, copacetic, that it's all uh, running pretty good. Um, on the uh, up to, I think it's 65, they have two piece steering gears. There, there's the main gear pinion and then the large round gear uh, that are two separate pieces. There's two grease zerks on those. I'm going to try to get it in the picture. I'll see if I can get this here yeah that's not too bad but um, I don't have the grease zerks in the picture where's the grease zerk at? Doo -doo 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 -doo. oh yeah I did okay it's there okay, got the grease zerk on your main pitman arm here and then back over here on your second gear you've got another grease zerk keep those greased well and then inside um, you'll see the gears and where the gears are inside I always put I don't know how good we're gonna see this but the gears are back in there um, put a little bit of oil on them the reason I use I'm using this one it's gonna be the same on yours is uh, I didn't have to take side covers off of this to show you all right and uh, then more grease zerks and oil points oil where your rock shaft is on the inside and on the outside that's your uh, lift lever just oil both of those where those are carried they're kind of like a carrier bearing but with no bushings or anything in them oil those well oil your pivot point on the base of your button where your where this pivots right here okay. um, these are drive shaft driven we'll get to that part here real quick you see it comes off the front of the engine and the drive shaft is mounted on the newer models uh, with a flex plate. The older models have an old vulcanized uh, double steel uh, plate with vulcanized rubber between them and they fail. So I usually switch everything over to fiber disc like I have here. And it's the same way at the other end of this drive shaft. The drive shaft comes through and comes into the bevel gear box right down here. And it, uh, you have two right angle gears that mesh together bevel gears and uh, they're what give you your drive and then everything is transferred via the bevel gear box to the transmission through a uh, belt through your drive belt okay that's how the whole thing uh, gets into motion the front shaft that you'll see on these this one with the cover that's actually the crankshaft of the engine that's also used for using things like sweepsters brush cutters snow blowers things of that sort that are mounted to the front of the engine okay and I keep this covered uh, using an old lift lever cover with oil to keep that uh, shaft clean 
so that when I have to put an implement on there, I don't have to worry about rust or anything like that in the groove or in your keyway or anything in that with that in that manner. Okay, that takes care of how it's driven and what this front shaft is for and how everything's put together there. Your front axle, I always oil this pivot point. There is a um, uh, spacer bushing in there so you're going to get a little bit of wobble back and forth that's normal on the axle it's going to wobble a little bit this way it's supposed to wobble it's supposed to turn side to side and uh, then uh, after you get that oiled then if you look at the back of it it's got kind of a wishbone towards the back up underneath I don't know if I can get a shot of that but I'll give it a try here let me see yeah, there's the wishbone there. Okay, see? Um, get my finger in this 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 bar right here, and it goes into uh, a piece of angle iron. You want to grease that point. Don't oil it. Grease it. You want something that's going to stay on there. That causes a lot of slop and play in your axle, also. Okay. And then on the drag link, which is over here, there are two. Uh, balls on each of those. There's a ball here and a ball there and they are adjustable by pulling the cotter pin and then tightening the ends down. You don't want them super tight but you don't want them to to rock back and forth. Okay, so and I usually grease those. You can see a little bit of grease coming down from them. I pop them off and lift them out and make sure I've got those sockets greased well. Uh, that's on your drag link and then on your king pins on your axles you've got a grease fitting one on each side there make sure you keep those greased fairly well jack it up so that you get grease to come out of the bottom uh, it's more important to have grease at the bottom than it is the top because that's where the working load is the weight is all at the bottom of the king pin down here then your center link uh, oil there's also this this motion here is normal because there's a spacer bushing on each side that's what allows this to run freely and have the nut and bolt tightened down real tight. Um, <clears throat> as far as engine maintenance, keep your oil levels checked. Make sure you've got your idle set screw and your main jet screw set right. Gas tanks, very important on the later models like this one here. If it's going to be stored outside, make absolutely sure you'll always have heat or a gas line antifreeze or, or dryer in the gas tank these gas tanks rust out at the bottom and when they do you're going to get one on eBay a, a decent one with no rust in the bottom of it you're going to pay 50 60 bucks for it plus shipping so it's easy preventative maintenance is a lot better than having to go out and buy a new gas tank every few years if you store them outside so uh, to check all you have to do is take your gas cap off shine a flashlight down in there see if you've got rust and sediment if you got rust and sediment empty the gas tank completely out take the gas tank out throw nuts and bolts in it with some kerosene diesel fuel or paint thinner and shake it around that's going to break all the rust loose get everything cleaned up get it all cleaned out of there dump it back out put your gas tank back on keep the gas line antifreeze in the tank something like sea foam stable heat any of any of those products will work good and I'm at 13 and a half minutes. I've pretty well got uh, everything covered as far as just a general quick once over maintenance. Um, if anybody's got any questions or problems or things in, in particular that they're uh, having issues with with their tractor, just get a hold of me and let me know. Uh, as I feel able, I will get out and make uh, my videos for you guys so that you can keep your machines going. I appreciate all the requests and all the support that I get from everybody. Um, all of my subscribers, there's a ton of you guys out there. And I do my best to answer uh, everybody's questions and everybody's requests. Sometimes I might miss one, but eventually I'll get to I just answered one that was like three months old that I caught that I had missed. Um, but uh, if you need something in particular, send me a message instead of, putting a comment on the uh, actual video and that'll be an easier way for you guys to be sure that um, I get you on my list for videos and as usual this is Zippo later I'm out